So today we're gonna to be answering the question, can the M4 MacBook Air with only 16 gigabytes of RAM and HGPU cores run the latest games? So the rule of this video is that we're gonna be looking at titles that have been released in the last three months, whether they've been ported to macOS very recently or been released on Windows and we're gonna be running them through translation layers on the Mac. And we're gonna be finding out whether these titles can run on what is basically the weakest M4 chip on a passively cooled fanless laptop and today we're going to find out how that's going to go. So all right we're pushing the Mac to its limit but while we're testing frame rates let's talk about something super important your digital footprint. Have you ever googled yourself and found well way too much or not enough? Whether you're a gamer, creator or somebody who just doesn't want their online reputation working against them you need to check out Whitebridge AI. It's an AI driven platform that scans over 30 trusted platforms in real time giving you a full breakdown of your digital presence online reputation and even verifying identities, which let's be real, it's kind of cool and maybe a little bit scary. For example, if you're a streamer, content creator, or even applying for a job, companies might be Googling you before you even get an interview. Whitebridge AI helps you see what they see before they even see it. I actually ran my own check and Whitebridge AI pulled everything into a clear categorized report so I could see and manage my digital presence in one place. It could even do some crazy stuff like find my Facebook and Reddit accounts. And I even found stuff that I couldn't even remember posting from years ago. So if you want to see what the internet knows about you, check everything using Whitebridge AI and get 25% off with the code Andrew Tsai. Anyway, let's get back to the main content. So the first game on this list is of course Assassin's Creed Shadows. Now technically the M4 MacBook Air doesn't meet the minimum system requirements and you can see this when you're trying to run this game even at lower settings at 1080p. However, to be fair in this particular section, the hideout ray tracing is mandatory, it cannot be turned off. However, if we go out into the open world and set the rest resolution a little bit lower so we're at 720p here with Metal FX still set to performance mode so looking even blurrier but at this compromised resolution we are able to get playable frame rates hovering about 28 to 33 fps so even though this game isn't very well optimized for the Mac you can play it on the M4 MacBook Air if you wanted to it is a compromised experience however. Next up is Control now this is a very recently released Mac port of this excellent Remedy game. For action titles like these I try to aim for 60 frames per second and what I found is that pulling this down to the low graphics preset and running Metal FX at 540p which is basically the equivalent of performance mode yields extremely good results so we're getting about 50 to 60 or so fps and even though we're upscaling it still manages to look pretty good in my opinion really not too bad for a passively cool fanless MacBook Air. So overall I'd say that the Mac port of Control performs exceptionally well. Frame rates aren't actually that much higher than running this through a translation layer, however the frame pacing is a lot more smooth and this manages to look really good on the Mac. So one thing to be aware of is that it's currently Mac App Store exclusive, however the Mac port is going to come to Steam in the future. Often you'll find it much cheaper on the Steam sales, so make sure to check it out there. Next we're looking at another recently released Mac port of Wuthering Waves. So this is the online open world gacha like game similar to Genshin Impact with plenty of fast paced and fluid combat. Now here I've set the quality preset basically to the maximum and we're running this at 1080p and getting a fine 80 to 90 plus FPS which is not too bad. I did experiment with the Metal FX turned off and on and I couldn't really see that much performance difference so I decided to leave mine off. It still looks great without upscaling. Now one issue with the game is that you can't really set a full screen resolution correctly. If you try to run this by default on your MacBook Air screen it's going to try to run at the Retina resolution which is way too high. At 2940 by 1848 we're getting about 45 FPS at the balance preset so if you want lower temperatures, better battery life etc then I do recommend setting a desktop Top resolution using an application like Switch Res X which allows you to set a custom 16x9 or 16x10 aspect ratio. I'll leave a link to my tutorial in the description. Next we're going to look at a couple of casual Mac titles. So this is Two Point Museum. So you might be familiar with Two Point Campus and Two Point Hospital and they're all basically business management simulators. Kind of in the vein of Theme Hospital, if you're familiar with that series. You basically start off with a blank canvas and then you prop down exhibits, hire employees, sell tickets etc and build your ideal museum. 
So I didn't test out a huge amount of the game, but we're running pretty well at 1080p at medium preset, running about 70 FPS. Obviously, it's gonna lower in frame rate once more stuff gets rendered on screen, but this is a pretty good start. Next, we're looking at the horror fishing game called Dredge, which recently came out on macOS as well. What's cool is that you can buy this on the Mac App Store, and it'll also redeem for iPhone iPad as well, and you'll have cross saves, which is a pretty cool feature. So basically what you do is you have a boat, you go out and fish, sell your fish on land, and then upgrade parts of your boat, the fishing equipment, the cargo, etc., and complete a bunch of quests for the islanders. Pretty fun, casual game, so make sure to check this one out. So next we're looking at Power World, which recently got an update, which now allows Mac dedicated servers and cross-platform play. However, we still have major performance issues on Mac. Whilst frame rates are mostly consistent, every now and then it will just randomly stutter. And this was quite annoying. And it's actually quite a frequent occurrence. It would happen at least once or twice every minute. And it's a shame because generally the frame rates are okay. We're running this at 1080p on the low graphics preset with Metal FX set to performance mode. And even though this is a fairly casual survival crafting game, it's actually quite demanding behind the scenes. So I really hope that the devs of Power World manage to fix these consistency issues in the future because this happens even on the high-end Macs as well. Next up, we're looking at Schedule 1. So this is actually a Windows only game and we're running this through the Crossover 25 translation layer. If you wanna find out how to do this yourself, then make sure to follow the link in the description. So Schedule 1 is a very popular title at the moment. What it basically is about is that you play a drug dealer who rents a room, you buy equipment, you make your own supplies, you do a bunch of deals, you deal with the dead drops, and basically you're trying to make a lot of money, upgrade your equipment and your room, etc. Pretty much living out your drug dealer fantasy. So what this really shows is that the MacBook Air M4 can actually play some of the latest Windows games, even though this particular game is not particularly demanding. It plays pretty much flawlessly through crossover. So next we're looking at a recently released Windows RPG called Atomfall. So this is a first person RPG made by Rebellion who are the same developers of the Sniper Elite series. And this kind of reminds me a little bit of Skyrim, a little bit of Fallout New Vegas. It's set in this post-apocalyptic world. And this time it's actually set in Northern England, which is a bit of a change of pace. So this is actually a brand new Windows game and we're running it through all of these translation layers. And to get a decent frame rate, I've put this down from 1080p, running this at medium settings and I put the under scale to 70%, which gives about 45 plus FPS. You can actually get this to 60 if you set the render scale even lower, but I don't think that it's completely necessary for this type of game. Anyway, good to see that this type of Windows title is playable on the M4 Apple Silicon MacBook Air, which is great because we don't get that many of these big RPGs coming out on this platform. So anyway, that is my look at new games running on the M4 MacBook Air. And of course, plenty of other games are gonna work on this particular computer. Even though it is the lowest end chip of this generation, many other titles will actually work pretty well. For example, Street Fighter VI is an older title now, I guess, but you can actually play this online at 1080p low through Crossover 25. And there are loads of other games which also work great as well. I actually have two more videos in this series about the M4 MacBook Air. I'll leave a link to these in the description and you can go ahead and check them out. There's plenty of other titles to try. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.